Okay, so I've been doing a flight throughout the afternoon. I've just stopped for dinner and paused the simulator and I've just come back and we are approaching Dakar. I've flown here from, if we have a look on Volanta and zoom out, flown here all the way from Stansted in London, near London, north of London. So we've flown right the way across France and Spain, past Morocco, over Mauritania and we're over Senegal at the moment and we're about to go into Dakar. So we've got a flight plan I'm about to start following so I'm going to turn left to 178 degrees. So if we go and look in the cockpit we are at 12,000 feet we are going to start descending down to something a bit more sedate so let's go down to we're over the ocean now nearly, so we can come down to 5,000 feet for this part of the flight. And we'll make our way down at a given vertical speed of 2,000 feet a minute. We are doing 250 knots. We've got the auto throttle armed and speed mode. We need to be careful about accelerating. Let's see if the throttles are going to come back. They're against the stops, so we can't quite descend that fast. So let's go for 1600 feet a minute, and you should see the speed start to bleed back off back towards 250, which is good. OK, so we need to change direction now to 178 degrees. So we're just dialing that in. Hopefully we will see the aeroplane change direction. I think we're going to see some bugs here. We want 178, there it goes. I forgot you have to press the button in on the heading to select the new heading that you've dialed in. found an interesting new, or new to me, tool today. If we look in downloads, this is a free download on, on from the internet, FS Simrate Bandit. If we go and run it, it connects to your simulator via Simulate FS Connect. One. And then it would tell you what rate the simulator is running at. So if you've been using accelerated time, there's no indication if you use accelerated time in the simulator what rate you're actually running at, so this tells you which is quite nice. OK, so we're now at the direction we wanted to be going. We've missed our waypoint slightly, so we will take 10 degrees off. So we'll come back towards this. So we're descending to 5,000 feet. We want to be, if we look at the map on little nav map, we can get rid of all of these off the, out of the way so we've got more room on the map. We're not interested in the elevation plot either. So yeah, we want to be at 2,500 feet by the time we get to here. So we've got lots and lots of time to do that. So well, let's go and have a look at the ILS for that runway. We can't quite see it there on the map. Let's go for a simplified map just for the moment. 110.3, 360 degrees magnetic. So let's go and check the radios in the aircraft. So we go and look on the FMC, nav radios, and we want 110.3 for the ILS. And for the course we wanted 360. 360 course. Hmm, interesting. Oh, it probably just takes a zero, doesn't it? Instead of 360, which it already is. So if I put in a zero, will it accept a zero? Yes, it will. OK, that's fine. OK. So when we get within range, hopefully we'll pick the ILS up and we could engage approach mode. I'll, to be honest, I'll probably land by hand because it's more fun to land manually. So it's time to have a look out the window. So this is the corner of Senegal don't know much about this part of the world at all. Should we have a look outside? 
Oh, earlier on as well, just for interest, I modified the vol the relative volumes in flight simulator. So I'll turn that back up so we can actually hear the aeroplane during our descent. So yeah, if you're not aware of that, if you right click on the speaker in Windows 10, you can go to a volume mixer and you can change the output volume of particular programs independently of each other. The reason you might do that is if you're doing a group flight with voices, you might want to turn the volume of your aircraft down so you can hear the voices coming from Discord or TeamSpeak or whatever you're using. Okay, so you can see we're getting closer to where we wanted to be. So I'm going to turn back now to 178 degrees. So back in the cockpit, we're going to turn this back to 178. It's interesting, it's not lit up on altitude hold. So that's just saying to hold on the current heading. So it looks like if you don't have LNAV or VNAV switched on, it's just going to use the heading regardless. But there's no indicator for it. I wonder how accurate that is. There's a few things about the 747 I'm not too happy about that don't quite work well enough, if that makes sense. Anyway, we'll soldier on. So we'll come out of this last turn and we'll descend to 2,500 feet. So we're on the downwind leg. We can see actually it's going to be a bit of a crosswind. Six knots is hardly any wind to worry about. So we've got a slight tailwind at the moment. A couple of knot tailwind. But yeah, nothing to concern ourselves with. When we make this turn, we'll turn to two, we'll um, reduce speed to 220. And then we'll reduce speed to 180 and start taking the speed off. So we're doing 160 for the final approach maybe even down to 150 we'll see okay so let's start taking the speed down to 220 it'll take a while so there's 220 not selected you can see the throttles have come back and the speed is decreasing So with selected mode on the autopilot, the 747 seems to be pretty much okay. It's as soon as you use VNAV it starts to play up, or it sometimes plays up. The first part of this flight I had VNAV engaged and it was working. Okay, so now we're going to make our next turn and we're going to go to 271 degrees magnetic. So I'm just using this nav map here to see where we are. Where we are. Vol Volanta is actually recording our track for future reference of what we did. So looking in the nav map, we're going to make our turn now to 271 degrees. We can actually increase our our rate of turn to seven. One. So if you look on this dial here, this is your bank angle that you're going to use to make your turn, and this is obviously, or this knob changes the angle. So we can actually change the rate of turn. So I've let us bank at 25 degrees. As you can see being reflected on the artificial horizon. If you don't have that selected or if you put it to auto, it will make its own mind up. So there we go. We're there, thereabouts. So then we'll come in on this final leg and we're looking for 360 degrees basically. We have to remember there's a side wind, so we might go for one or two degrees just to hold against the side wind. So, shall we start descending? Let's go for 3,500 to begin with. The other thing we're going to do 
you start looking at flaps. We've got the ILS program, that's fine. So somewhere out there is where we're going. It's probably from this angle it's going to be out there somewhere. It's probably there, isn't it? That jetty of land out there. Okay, so it's looking good so far. So this is cheating a little bit using little nav map, but it's fine. The FMC, I'm not sure if you can program specific approaches or waypoints into the FMC on this. Should we have a look? So if we went into departure and arrivals, we went to arrivals, runway 18, and execute. That's runway 36 we want, isn't it? Sorry. Go back, arrivals for runway 36, execute. So, yeah, you can see it's put some waypoints in. So, we're coming up to our turn. We're not going to take any notice of the FMC. It's a bit random in the 747 at the moment. So we're going to come up here at... I'm going to go for 3 degrees to hold off the side with maybe 2 degrees. So here we go, we're going to do it now. Heading. So you can see there's the ocean out there. I don't know if you've ever noticed, if you're trying to adjust one of the controls when you're zoomed out, the cockpit can sway around with the momentum of the movement. If you zoom in, you will notice the cockpit levels up, or it, you know, it straightens up to your head position, which means it then won't sway as much. So if you zoom in to adjust the control, the mouse won't drift off of the control while you're trying to do it. Okay, so I'm going to take that back to north and hoping the wind will push us that gently across until we get to there. So we're going to drop now to 200 knots. Or maybe go to 180 actually. Drop to 2,500 feet. Reduce the range on this. So yeah, we're going to join the rest of the approach, but very, very late on. So we've kind of invented our own approach here. So we're coming into Leopold Cedar Seng Airport, otherwise known as Dakar. G O O Y never been to this airport before so I have no idea what we're going to see when we get there so we're going to hopefully we'll finish by halfway down the runway so we won't have to backtrack and we can turn straight off and go for the, the terminal buildings so we've got parking is this the general aviation by the look of it so these are all parking spaces Interesting. Okay, so we're coming on runway 36. We're about 10 miles out from the ILS now. And we're down to 2,500 feet, which is great. We're going to start looking to drop the flaps now. The speed is coming down to 200 knots, and obviously it's decelerating quite quickly because we've dropped flaps and we're getting some drag from the flaps. So let's see how we were doing on that drift. Yeah, so we have drifted and we're about on the centre line now. So 
So we're going to turn three degrees into the wind to hopefully hold it so we don't drift any further. Let's have a look and see if we can go to approach mode. So you can see at the moment we are seeing an indicator for the centre line. That's probably coming from the GPS though. We're not seeing diamonds on the side of the HUD yet. One one zero point three. That's one one zero point three. Three sixty degrees. Glide slope three degrees. But the other thing we'll just check before we get too close to the airport. Let's go to airport overview. So this is G O O Y. We're going to look for the Q N H for the airport. So is it listing it? Q one zero one one. So, in here, we can see at the moment we've got 2992, so we'll change the format, 1013, so we want 1, 1, 1, there you go. So now we've got an accurate reference of how, how far we are off the ground. And there's the runway. We're going to go for approach mode. Now, we'll see what happens. We're going to reduce speed further. Oh, 60 knots. Gear down. Flaps are travelling. So I've just set the flaps to 10 degrees. Let's go for flaps 20. Flaps 30. And the plane is now descending. So this is interesting. Where are the diamonds? Okay, it's not a major issue. So let's centre the view up and get ourselves ready to take over. We'll turn on the landing lights actually. Okay. I really should look into storing these views so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Okay, so come off the autopilot, disarm the auto throttle. So flaps are down, gear is down, and we're going to fly in. not ideal that we don't have the diamonds on the HUD but we can do this visually without too much trouble. So we're keeping on the speed that we don't get too fast. Feet. 
400 feet. Three hundred feet. Two hundred feet. One hundred feet. And we're down. And reverse thrust and brakes. And we made the turn. Just. Flaps back up. You get this ground handling problem with the 747 in-flight simulator that its nose wheel steering isn't very good at all. Unless you're doing kind of walking pace, it really can't steer at all. It's probably less than walking pace, to be honest. Okay, clear of active. Whoops, I've lost the internet connection. Ah, and it's reconnected again. It's the first time I've seen that in a long time. They're building, um, they're putting fibre in all over town. So I'm surprised we've had as stable an internet connection as we have had, to be honest. So there we go, we've arrived at Dakar. It was interesting that we didn't have ILS, so I had to fly in completely visually. I'm not sure how that would work at night or in bad weather. Especially considering we tuned the ILS in, so we had the glide slope, the the horizontal part of it. We just didn't have any any vertical part at all. Is that van going to move today? Would be good. Is there going to be a standoff now between us and that van? Should we have a look outside? Okay, mate, are you going to move? Apparently not. Oh, and that lorry's not taking any notice of us either. Come on, Scooby-Doo, out of the way. All it needs is a mystery machine sticker, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we see if we can intimidate him? If not, I'll just stop the video here. He's not going to move, is he? Okay, I'll stop the video there. Looks like the passengers are going to have to walk across the tarmac because of the angry little man in the van. Okay, there you go. Anyway, interesting video. Landing at Dakar.